I was looking at some scriptures this morning, and I was reading. Uh, I was reading about uh, jo- uh, in John fifteen one through seven. Jesus was saying, "I am the true vine. My Father is a husbandman. I am the vine, and you are the branches." Now in the Ozarks, we know all about vines and branches and trees and plants and. We know where the nutrients come from. They come through the vine. And whatever is in the branches is coming from the vine. So whatever that vine is, we know by, telling, by looking at the vine what kind of fruit is going to be on the branches. So when Jesus says, I'm the vine, you are the branches, then we are going to be having the fruit If we're bearing the right fruit, we're going to be bearing the fruit from Jesus Christ. So that's a good one to remember. Also, as we, as, uh, and this goes back to the third grade science, I'm always telling you about third grade science, but we always had the little, the little seeds and the butter bean is a good seed that you can, can dampen and the seed coat will open. We don't worry about the outside. That's us because we open and we let what's inside come out. That's what is going to bear the fruit, is what's on the inside of us. We open and give the, the, little, vine, the little plant on the inside. It's like a little new Christian that's getting started. And we, we've got to open that coat up and give it, give the, the what, whatever is in that. And our seed is Jesus Christ. So, you know, it, it's just something that, that you can do or you can think about it and maybe it helps to understand a little bit more about the seed and, uh, and of course, the husbandman. Uh, many gardeners have got green thumbs and you can tell they really work that ground. They really make sure those plants have got water. They have the right nutrients they have whatever that plant is needing. A lot of times they save their seeds so they could replant it. God the Father is doing the same thing for you. So just remember those things. It makes it boils it down very, very simply, but that's the way that it works. And Jesus was the one that is giving the examples of this to help make it easier to understand. In Genesis 1 1, God said, let the earth bring forth living things of their own kind. That means the cattle are going to look like cattle. The, the birds are going to look like the birds. The dogs are going to look like dogs. And the cats are going to look like cats. They're going to bring forth their own kind after, after their own selves. And that is, that's the way that we are to be doing it also. Uh, And when we have that, take it right back to the seed. When we have that seed within us, what are we going to be bearing forth? We're going to be bearing forth Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus said in John 10, 10, I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. That's why Jesus came, to give us life and to give it abundantly. Some people think that all of the bad things that happen, well, God's mad at me, are... God's just doing this. No. Jesus came to give us life and to give it abundantly. So, you know, these are just very, very simple little scriptures, and you've heard them over and over and over, but it just felt like these were the ones that I needed to give. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the reality. He's the real thing. He is reality, people. That's the way. That's the door. He is the door to go through. He's the only way. Uh, Satan comes to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Look at what's happening. What kind of fruit is he bearing? Where is there killing and destroying? That's coming from, from the spirit of Satan. What is destroying homes? What is causing abuse in the homes and families, in children or in wives or husbands? Whatever. Where's that coming from? Well, it's not coming from God because he said he comes to give us life and give it abundantly. But he tells us very plainly, very clearly, Satan comes to steal. He wants to steal 
what God has given you through his word. Uh, so many people, you will have uh, baby Christians when they're first born. They, they're like a, a, a human baby. You try to feed them something, and sometimes they'll just spit it right back out at you. That's a baby for you. Sometimes baby Christians are not ready yet to receive the word. And they just say, well, I've, I've heard people say that, but you know, I just don't take it like that. I believe it's more like this. They're a baby Christian. Does it line up with God's word? If it doesn't line up with God's word, get away from it. So just remember that. Um, Second, uh, Second Corinthians five seventeen. Wherefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Now, where did you get that at? A new creation. If you're born again, you're a new creation. You are in Christ. Ephesians two and ten says, "For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus." Take it to the Word. Take it to the Word, and then if they won't receive it, then pray for them. Hopefully they will get in the word. Faith comes through the word. So we have to get in there. We have to meditate on it. That's what we feed on. And so we think, okay, well, we just don't understand how, how this could happen. Well, it says it's like, it's a God-like redemption. You know, it's hard for us to understand the spirit world. But he was a God-like redemption by the God that could say, let the light be in the firmament in heaven and in a split second it appear. Yes. That's the kind of power we're talking about. That's the kind of power our God the Father had. That's the kind of power that Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God the Father walk in. And that's the kind, that's the Holy Spirit was the one that drew you to salvation. He's with you. He wants to, to guide you and to take you through. People, I want you just to stand. If you want to stand, just stand. And let's give him praise. And let's prepare ourselves to hear. The anointing comes through the speakers from your reading your Bible, but it also comes through songs. Listen to it. Meditate on what they're saying because God may be speaking directly to you this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Father God, and we want to give you all glory. All glory. Father God, that's what Jesus wanted to do was to give you glory through his death, through his resurrection and the things that he did on the earth. We want to do the same, Father. We want you to have complete and total control of this church. This church is yours and has been from the time the first nail was drove. Father God, we give it to you. We give our whatever you desire you would have for this church. We want it. Father God, I pray for our spiritual eyes to be opened, our spiritual ears to be opened to hear and to see the things that you would have us to see and to hear. Oh, Father God, we give you praise. Oh, Father God, in the precious, precious holy name of my Savior, my King, my Lord, I give you praise, Father. In the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise. Amen. 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 Our God is a good God. He's a good, good Father. Let's run to Him this morning. Amen. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I tender whisper of love in the dead of night and, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who Only you. 
worship you, to honor you and give you our affection, our undivided attention this morning.
I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here moving every heart. I worship you. I worship See you. 
There's a situation in your life, and when you think about that situation, this word comes, what a mess. What a mess. You don't even know which way to go. Uh, you've tried self-help, you've tried Google, you've tried Siri, and all of those things have let you down. And I believe the Lord's here today to tell you, I'm the way. See, here's the thing, church. If you, I, I was lost one time in downtown St. Louis with a 34-foot trailer on. And I don't even know how I got to where I got. But when I would have to make a left turn, people would have to move their rigs. It was awkward. But I saw this guy, and he said, hey, listen. This is what he said. He said, I know the way out of here. And I didn't ask you more questions. I just followed him. I was never so happy to see I-44 in my whole life. Now listen, you might be in that mess and say, well, I don't even know how to get out. I don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do. You don't need to know. You just need to know the one who does know. You need to have enough faith to follow. You need to have enough faith to follow. Many of you that's in that mess trust the little GPS on your phone more than you do the Heavenly Father, myself included. Sometimes when you make a wrong turn, it says redirecting. Even if you're going the wrong way, the Lord will redirect you, church, the right way. Now listen, we're going to sing the chorus one more time. And it doesn't matter the situation, it applies to everyone. Listen, there's common denominators in everyone's story. And the common denominator is God. And God knows the way. In fact, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You want to know which way to, to go? You don't need to know someone. You need to know the one. And he'll lead you out. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. You are the way, Lord. And we're going we're gonna to sing that, Lord, one more time. Or as many times as, as Aaron feels like we need to, Lord. We're going to sing that again, Lord, that you are the way maker. Lord, you are the light in the darkness, Lord. And help us not to walk around, Lord. Not, not, not to make fun or not to poke fun, Lord. Look, look, one more thing, church, listen. A blind man walks around with his arms out because he can't see. Some of you need to open your eyes. If you were lost in the woods and you had the best mag light money could buy, you wouldn't leave it in your pocket. You'd get it out to illuminate your way. He's your light in the darkness he's your light and when you can see lee you know which way to go when you can see well i recognize this area this is the way out turn your light on church father god we thank you that you're the way maker we thank you that you make a way where there seems to be no way lord lord we don't need to know the way out we just need to know we need to follow you lord just like that guy in st louis said i didn't even know his name but I was so thankful that you sent him and said, hey, this is the way out of here. Now, God, if there's somebody out here who's lost or who's in that mess, Lord, or maybe there's someone, Lord, that's standing right beside them that knows the way, Lord. Lord, help us be a way maker for somebody this week. And it's not by our power, but it's by your power. In Jesus' name. We make a 
miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. God, you know, the presence of God, there's no other place to be. When I was praying and getting ready for this morning, I was thinking about the next song that we're going to sing, and I was thinking about how when we walk in sometimes, and and we have to do this for certain reasons, but we have to kind of have a way that we're kind of going to go through the service, but quite honestly, it's not about our service. It's God's service, and He can mold it and make it into any way He wants. Um, But I also know that sometimes we try to make a lot out of, of worship. And what I really want to bring across this morning is that there's just no better place than sitting at the feet of Jesus. And when you get caught up in life and it kind of um, like just fills your brain with so many things that are going on. I'm telling you what, this has been a tough week for a lot in this community. Things have changed for a lot of families. And I know that we could say that almost weekly. (laughs) Things that we don't even know about that I know is going on with you right now that we don't know. Just remember that God loves you and he's here and he just wants you to sit at his feet this morning. The feet of Jesus. This song says that I want nothing else but God. It's very simple. And if we could just strip everything away for just a moment. Listen, when we do that, it doesn't take anything away from who God is. God is the way maker and the miracle worker. He is here this morning. But if we could just humble ourselves before the Lord this morning and just tell him, you know what, God, I, as Scott said, you don't have it figured out and you don't know the way. Sometimes you just sit at the, at the feet of Jesus and begin to praise him and to worship him. And then there becomes clarity, peace, that surpasses all understanding that this world cannot give you. Your neighbor cannot give that to you. Your own community cannot give that to you. But Jesus Christ, the one that died for each and every person in this room, for everyone that is listening on the internet this morning, do not 
feel alone this morning? Because when you're in the presence of the Almighty, you have everything that you need and you have everything around that you, that you need. You're not alone. God loves you. We're just caught up in you this morning, God. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave I'm not here for blessing, Lord Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you and I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry when I just sing another song take me back to where we started I open up my heart to I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forget that you're enough. Take me back to where we started.
The Word of God says, uh, in His presence comes fullness of joy. Yes. And the Word of God also says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's right. So in His presence is how you become strong. That's right. how you get joy. You know, there's correlations between my kids and me and me and my Heavenly Father. There's correlations between you and your grandkids and your Heavenly Father. Here's the thing. Uh, sometimes I'm gone. A lot. I'm home at night, but it's bedtime. And really, to be honest, by the time I get home, I really don't have enough energy to hardly take a shower. So I, I miss my kids sometimes. And see, here's the deal. That song says nothing else will do. And it's talking about the presence of God. See, here's what God wants from you. He just wants to be with you. He doesn't want something from you. See, when I get to see my girls, I'm not looking for a glass of iced tea or a back rub or a foot rub or them to scratch my back. I just want to be with them. Right? I just want to be with them. It's not what they give me. It's just their presence. It charges a battery that no one else can charge, right? Listen, God doesn't want a bunch of stuff from you. He just wants to be with you. He doesn't want a glass of iced tea from you. He doesn't want a glass of water from you. Listen, God's not in need. He just wants to be with you. And what the world tries to do is fill that void, that need with things, stuff, titles, accomplishments. But at the end of the day, none of that matters. At someone's funeral, they read, oh, I don't want a big list of pompous things that nobody cares about. Who was the guy? Who was he? See, and today, I say this all the time, but it's true. Today, you're writing a page in your legacy. Today, you're living your legacy today. And this might be the last page you ever write. I'm not preaching gloom and doom to tell you the truth. So here's what we're going to do. The next song we're going to sing is called Let the Redeemed Say So. So here's, here's what that means, redeemed. If, you're, if you've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you're redeemed. That's a fancy word. You learned one today. You're redeemed. You're right with God. And, and being right with God, you have authority over things of this world. Because the word of God says, greater is he that's in me, that's the spirit of God, than he that's in the world. Satan's in the world. The spirit of God is in you. And, and that, that song we just sang, Waymaker, he's working. He never stops working. I think about when I'm really tired and my batteries are drained, the Spirit of God inside of me is as strong then as it is when I wake up refreshed. It keeps on working. It keeps on working day after day. And it's working for what? You're good. It's working for your good. So you need to take authority over the situations you have. The Word of God says this. Are you getting attacked in a certain area of your life, your mind? Some of you are scared of the future. And you know, Listen, I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. Here's what we need to do. You need to start speaking over those things. The Word of God says at the sound of His name, the enemy will flee. Start speaking in Jesus' name over this and in Jesus' name over that. The enemy will flee. Those are not my words. That's not my promise. That's God's promise. Stand on that. Believe in that. Ushers as you come. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the authority, Lord Jesus, to speak to the opposition, Lord. Lord, and your word says at the sound of your name, the enemy will flee. We speak Jesus' name over that mess today. We speak Jesus. You're, you're, not, you're not the God of a mess. You're not the God of confusion. You're not the, you're not the God uh, of, of a broken heart, Lord. In fact, your word says, Lord, you came to bind up the broken heart. Lord, your word says you'll give us beauty for ashes where we've been burnt. You'll give us beauty for that, Lord. Lord, you are the way maker. Lord, your word says... That, that if we need wisdom, Lord, that you'll give it freely without finding fault. We thank you for that, Lord. Somebody out here today needs some wisdom, Lord. They're at a crossroads in life and don't know whether to go right or go left or stand still or what to do, Lord. I don't know what they're supposed to do, Lord, but you do. Lord, because your word says this. It says the footsteps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. Lord, you know what step's supposed to be next. And that step has good for us. Lord, I pray over, pray over this offering, Lord. I pray that will lift up your kingdom, glorify your names, and add names to your book of life, Lord. Because it's all been said and done, Lord. 
When we're laying in the pine box, Lord, all the other things didn't matter. Did we get that right? Father God, we love you this morning, Lord. Lord, we're going to say so, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Sing of his promises evermore. And pour out your thankfulness. Let it overflow. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. This is you. He led me out of the desert, brought me into his streams, a river of living water. He turned my bitter into sweet. All my burdens are lifted. He took the shackles off my feet. Now there's no sound louder than a captive set free. So let the Say so, sing of his promises evermore. Pour out your thankfulness, let it overflow. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Well, there is joy in the morning. Bringing up in my soul, there's a life worth living because he calls me his own. There's a hallelujah after sweet victory, and there's no sound louder than a captive set free. Oh, there's no sound louder than a captive set free. So let the Sing of his promises evermore and pour out your thankfulness. Let it overflow. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Sing, you are. Hey, you are my deliverer. The freedom I'm living in, you are my deliverer, you are my promised land, you are my deliverer, the freedom I'm living in, you are my deliverer, you are my promise, I sing it like you mean it, oh you are my deliverer, the freedom I'm living in. to catch another gear right here. Hey, uh, Justin, you need to come on and um, 
We've got, I'm um, going to make just a little special side trip for just a moment right here. Justin has been raised in this church and in this ministry. He is now serving currently at uh, Blue Buck as a youth pastor out with Pastor Doug and Christine and uh, serving there. He's getting ready to, uh, actually has already taken this leap of faith. It's just getting ready to start uh, for you with this, this upcoming school year. Uh, we have missionaries that travel all over the world, missionaries that are involved in a lot of different things. Um, he's going to be a missionary to the local four counties right here in our school systems, and I'm excited about that. Uh, if there was ever a time that we needed uh, a greater godly presence in our schools, it is right now. And so um, he is uh, going to be a representative for uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes right here. I've known, like I said, known Justin for a long time. And not just in our school systems in junior high and in senior high uh, with our coaches there, but you'll also be serving in the college in West Plains as well with the uh, missions down there and all that. And so what I want you to do, and here's what we're going to do. I know Mission Sunday was, was last week. Justin wasn't able to be with us last week. And so we invited him to come, uh, number one, because first of all, I want to publicly acknowledge what he's doing and, and, uh, and, and promote this uh, before you. The church is going to be giving him uh, some financial support. He is literally stepping out. He is, he's given notice at his job. And, uh, and so he's going to be stepping out and taking this on as a mission. So he has to raise his own support to be able to do this for Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do two things this morning. We're going to pray over Justin, and we're going to send him out as a church family should send him out. And then secondly, we're going to ask you to pray about and see if you would like to do just personal support. And so to take care of him and in this endeavor right here, uh, trusting in God's people. So, um, Bob, we're going to dismiss your class to go on down. We're going to start this with prayer, and he's going to share a little bit with uh, what's on his heart, uh, the direction that the Lord's taken him, and then a little video clip. Father God, thank you for your word today. Thank you, Father, that we want to put faith to our prayers. We want to put feet to our prayers. So we thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity of uh, that you've given to Justin to open these doors. Uh, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes organization has been around. I, I was in it when I was in high school playing football and, and all of those things, Lord God. Thank you for that organization that has tried, true, and faithful for a long, long time. We thank you, Father, that still in effect. Thank you for the call and the open door for Justin to step through. We want to come alongside and partner. Bless the rest of this and the remaining part of this service. In Jesus' name, everyone agreed, said amen. amen. Make Justin welcome. Bob's class dismissed. Amen. Isn't God good? He is. All the time. Come on. God is good. All the time. And all the time. That's right. It's so good to be back in my home church. Um, thank you, David and Marsha, for letting me come and share with you. Uh, can we give a hand clap for our pastors? Uh, for, for so much for community. I'm so thankful for what they've meant to me and my family. Uh, my wife and Shakota were raised in this church, um, and I think we started coming at the age of nine. Um, and so just a little bitty tyke growing up, um, and it was back when the Blue Room was still here. And so very grown a lot, right? Um, and so, um, grew up kind of coming here and we got into the drama group and back then it was just a whole bunch of girls and they're yeah. like, Hey, we got a guy coming on. So, um, I got to play Jesus in the dramas. Um, the only thing is I also got to play Satan. So, you know, got to play both roles there. Um, but anyway, I've just love this church. I love everything that it stands for. Um, and so Man, so many good memories in this place, yeah. Yeah. from riding skateboards up and down the aisles yeah. and outside, yeah. to uh, playing ball downstairs and breaking lights, yep. replace those, um, all the way to smuggling pretend Bibles downstairs in the old stairs um, with uh, youth lock-ins. So um, this church um, embodies its mission statement. Um, and its mission statement from the very beginning has been touching the world with the love of Jesus through God's open door. And so um, I feel like um, you guys are doing that and will continue to do that. Um, right here in this very room when I was really, really little, Beth Hicks sat there and said, you have a call to ministry on your life. Um, and so I grew up with my dad um, being 
a traveling pastor and I was like, I don't know if I'm in that pastor realm Um, because I think the first thing that we asked when we went and traveled to a church was, how far is the outhouse? So, um, but anyway, uh, going on, um, later in high school, um, David um, decided to not only be the pastor of this church, but to also take the youth under his wing. Um, And I'm so grateful um, that he took on that role to shepherd um, the youth and um, his guidance, sacrifice, and leadership. Um, have changed the the people that I grew up with so much, Um, so much so that some of them are serving the church today, Um, some of them are even serving the country in the military, and even some of them um, are answering the call into ministry. And so you guys got to see firsthand Clayton Lyle get to do that for a number of years, um, and he's still continuing to do that. Um, So... um, I'm so thankful for the time that you invested into my life. Um, leading, it's led me to where I am now. Um, and then later, in, um, as I went into college, um, I really thought that call of ministry was into education and coaching. And so I taught for eight years um, and coached for eight years. And then after that eight years, I really felt God calling me to something else. Um, And so just started to explore that. How many of you guys have heard of FCA or have had your kids or been involved in FCA throughout the years? Okay. How many of you have never heard of FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes? Okay. There's some. Um, As I taught um, in the public school system, FCA is the only Christian ministry that's allowed within the school district. And so um, in high school, I was the FCA president with my sister. Um, And then as a teacher, I was able to lead um, as a huddle coach for all three schools that I taught at. Um, And so here's just a little bit of what FCA does if you want to play that video. from Missouri is engaging coaches and their student leaders to transform their fields by living out a committed relationship with Jesus Christ. South Central Missouri FCA spans 190 miles and is present in 53 schools, engaging 3,500 coaches and athletes in discipleship. The strategy to carry out ministry in South Central Missouri is threefold. Engaging coaches and athletes relationally through huddles and Bible studies. Well, what FCA does for us is it keeps us together. You know, it, uh, it tells us it's okay to be uh, an athlete, to be a football player, and love God at the same time. It's like answering a prayer for me, is that I want to have a God-centered program. And that's giving me the ability to do that. I'm helping these guys get to a point that's gonna make them better men someday. And that's really what I feel like God's called uh, coaches to do. Equipping coaches and athletes with training and resources to minister to their local spheres of influence. We can be successful. We have a choice just as much to be in the gym, to be in the classroom, to do homework, not to do homework. It's our choice to do that. And so that choice is out there for us to be successful. And empowering coaches and athletes to experience the gospel, grow in their faith and share him with others. Jacob is a dynamic force for our junior class. Miss Embry, she really pushes me to be like the best person. I'll walk in her class every day and she tells me, Jacob, you give him the devotion. I want to see him growing and I get so excited.
whenever um, he comes in and I start asking him, hey, you're ready to do devotions? And he says, I can't do that. And I ask, have you ever thought of one? And he's like, oh, I didn't have it all planned out. But it's really made me want to go and talk to everyone, give more devotions, touch more people, and just let them know that no matter what, we're all going to be there. We're going to give them more that they need. FCA of South Central Missouri wants coaches and athletes and all whom they engage with to know the love of Jesus Christ. There are encouraging things up throughout the hallways on walkers. I know that um, there's Bibles in classrooms. I know there's Bibles in backpacks. FCA has kind of forced me to like step out and to stand up for God and what He means to me. It's just like a refresher, you know, whenever I come on Friday, I get excited, you know, it's something that kids share their stories or share their favorite Bible verse even, and it's just kind of like, these are kids I go to school with and I walk down the hallways with, and um, it's just such a refresher for me to realize, like, we're all looking out for each other, we're all looking, like, what's God done for us? It's a great opportunity um, to be a part of their lives. We get to have conversations, you know, about what we believe in, and it's nothing that we hide. FCA is one of those things when you have a safe spot to where you can pray and you can be genuine, and you can tell others about how God has just wrapped His arms around you. FCA will continue to stop with coaches and athletes so that Christ is lived out in South Central Missouri. So I don't know how God has called me into this, but uh, it, I wouldn't imagine doing anything different. Uh, Billy Graham once said, a coach will impact more people in one year than the average person will in an entire lifetime. And so if you think about an, an impactful ministry, um, you got to go to the coaches. The coaches got to have somebody that's going to, to be with them and encourage them. And so uh, FCA's mission is to lead every coach and athlete into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ through the influence of athletes and coaches. And so in that video, um, the guy that's going around doing ministry, his name is Brian Mitchell, um, and he's actually going to be my boss. He's the area director for Southwest Central. Um, and when I taught and when I coached um, in the three school districts that I was at, he was my mentor. And so uh, he came in and met with me, and um, I started up two different of the SCA ministries and just starting from scratch to building it to where it's flourishing today um, would not have happened if he had not given me leadership and, and, and wisdom um, to go through that. Um, he challenged me, but at the same time encouraged me. Um, and, and throughout our time, he's really become, become a, a Paul in my life. Um, and so um, through that relationship, um, they had the idea um, to divide his counties up. So he's up in Branson and pretty busy up there with what he's doing. So they've se separated four counties and they've created a new position in West Plains. So there's not been a area representative in this area um, until right now. Um, and so um, kind of back then, I was still teaching when he said I would be a good candidate for that. And I was like, I don't. You know, it sounds like an awesome opportunity. I would love to work with that, but I, I, I just I don't see, you know, where that's going to line up. And um, man, a couple years ago, uh, Mike Hawkins came down for for um, for a revival, and uh, he he asked us. He's like, "Is there anybody that feels called into the ministry?" And uh, it just really stirred in my heart that back then, like. Yeah, I, I really do. I really do feel called into the ministry. Um, and then um, just kind of had to work a couple of jobs in between. It's been a 20-month wait for everything to transfer from up Branson down here. So just trying to stay faithful, trying to stay positive, um, and trying to rely on God um, to bring this about. And Mike Hawkins came back again for another revival. Um, and he called me up. And he said, there's about to be some doors opened up for you. Um, and right then I just, I knew it was confirmation that this is the call that God has placed on my life. Um, and so 
like Brian, poured into me and encouraged me so much. Um, I want to do that for other people. Um, and so to be able to get to walk in his, his footsteps and uh, to live out this dream job that I get to have, um, it's just God has worked it from my past all the way up to the future um, that I'm going to be doing this. And so I'm so excited. Um, but in Romans 10, 14, let me get there real quick. I'm actually going to start in verse 11. It says, For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jews and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? And so um, in my Bible, it kind of goes into depth into scripture. Um, and it's a little bit of an expounded text. And it says, as simple as this first step is, however, it cannot happen unless people believe in Christ, which will not happen unless they hear the message. And in order for people to hear and receive the message of Jesus, someone has to tell them about it. The whole process starts with someone who cares enough to communicate Christ's message. In many case, cases, the message will not even be communicated fully enough to people in other lands and cultures unless Christians send and support those who God has called to deliver his message to the people and places. Those who help send others are filling a major and privileged role in introducing people to Christ. We can all participate in the effort to bring good news to those who have not yet heard about Jesus. And so um, I'm just asking that um, my home church that has supported me and in, in, in growing up um, would continue um, to support me um, in, in moving on with this next journey. Um, like Pastor said, um, I'm quitting my job at the end of the month, and so God's called me to this full time. Um, so I need support, and I need monthly um, donors, that people that believe in what I'm doing and, and the call of God that has on my life. Um, so... S-A-N-D, however many numbers you want to put in front of that thousands, okay, right? So, okay. Hey, um, so Justin will be here after service. Uh, we want to make it easy for you to give. He'll have some little flyers there. There'll be some pinned up on the uh, bulletin board out, out back out there. Uh, get with him, ask him, here's what we're doing. Two things, again, we want to pray. How I many all know that don't cost any of us anything? We can all pray, and so we want to pray. And uh, we've got missionaries literally stationed all over the globe and thankful for that. But if there was ever a place that needed a missionary right here at home, it is in our schools. And so we ask you to prayerfully consider uh, your own personal support, just in that. Again, our missions board here at church has made a decision. Justin met with them a few weeks ago. You came and met with the missions board. And so as a church whole, we will be contributing. So it will be one of the missions that we're supporting. And that, again, uh, not just my decision, but that's the missions board's decision. Uh, we're asking you if you want to invest in that, too you prayerfully consider would you stand with me we're going to pray we're going to do just what the scripture says shakota is here you come on up honey i'm going to ask marsh to come up and what we're going to do is we're going to do just what the scripture says we're going to send him he is originally from our church they are now serving as youth pastors out at blue buck with doug and christine and thankful for that it was an honor to get to uh your sisters were a lot of fun you were a little bit tr they never broke any of the basement lights out just so you know that and so that, yeah, yeah, harder to have to face mom and dad than it was Pastor Dave, wasn't it, on that one there? So uh, put your hand up this way, and let's pray, and we're just going to bless them as they go into this new, this new opportunity. Father God, thank you for Justin and Shakota, Lord God. Thank you for a door of opportunity to minister, Lord God, not just to our student athletes only in junior high and high school and in college, Lord God, but to be there to minister to the coaches, to be an ear that they can turn to, Lord God. We 
are so thankful for our school systems, Lord God. We're so thankful for the Christians and the believers that are in our schools. And so, Father, wherever we have opportunity, we're going to we're going to seed and we're going to speak the name of Christ in every way that in the opportunity that we can, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for a step of faith by this family, Lord God, to to, to step out, Lord God, and, and and just trusting your call. And so we want to come along and partner with them, Father. We thank you for that anointing, that call, this special thing that you're doing in their life. And thank you, Father God. This thing's so much not about the money. It's about the mission. And so thank you for the mission. Thank you for the call. And we speak blessing over them and over this household, over this ministry. In Jesus' name, and everyone that agreed said amen. Thank you, Justin. We love you guys. Thank you. You got a fire Bible. I haven't seen that one, Shakota. Bless you, honey. All right. Uh